Good morning. How the devil are you doing this fine day? Me, uh, to be honest, I can barely contain my excitement. Um, just as soon as today's show is over, I will be working even more on our new members-only platform. This is going to be a key part of our strategy for the year ahead, or the years ahead, in fact. Uh, but more importantly, it will give a voice to the thousands of workers that currently have no private discussion forum to call their own. I'll be telling you more about that later in the show. But first, let's roll that intro and get this show on the road. <laughs> Welcome to The Breakfast Show. I'm your host, Mark Anthony. It's Monday, the 25th of October, and as that remarkably persistent guy just said, welcome to The Breakfast Show. I am your host, Mark Anthony. In today's show, emergency demolition halted in Scotland amidst asbestos fears. Are we sure the environmental lobby has thought this through? The never-ending cycle of pricing stupidity. We'll be getting up close with a new Cabelco excavator, and we're talking teeth with the fine folks at Komatsu. We'll get to all that in just a second, but first, let's see who among the rich and the shameless will be celebrating a birthday on this day of days. Happy birthday! And it's many happy returns to Pablo Picasso, a painter, though not in the decorating sense, to Italian boxer Primo Carnera and to the last Shah of Iran, to Yes singer John Anderson and to Red Hot Chili Peppers drummer Chad Smith, and happy birthday to singer Katy Perry. I kissed a girl and I liked it. Yeah, me too, Katy, me too. Emergency demolition works on a number of homes damaged in a gas explosion last week have been halted amid fears over the presence of asbestos. Four homes, or four houses rather, most badly affected by the blast in Gorse Park in Air were in the process of being demolished by local firm Caskey when the asbestos alarm bells were sounded. Engineers from gas company SGN remain at the scene at Gorse Park and are assisting the emergency services with their probe into the cause of the initial blast. The huge explosion, which could apparently be felt for miles around, completely destroyed one house with a family of four inside, leaving them all in a serious condition in hospitals across Glasgow. A total of 35 homes remain cordoned off with a number damaged by the force of the blast. Uh, Demolition company Caskey, a local company, has been unable to comment on the presence of asbestos so far, but the investigation is ongoing. Are we absolutely sure that the environmental lobby has thought all this through? There's no question they have the ear of governments around the world and that that situation is only going to be exacerbated when the COP26 climate conference rolls around uh, later this week. But I find myself confused and perplexed, though that's nothing particularly unusual. With all their talk of embodied carbon, environmentalists clearly have the construction sector in their crosshairs. And they seem to have taken a a specific dislike to the cement industry, which they claim would be the world's third largest greenhouse gas emitter behind China and the US if it were a country. According to the latest statistics, the world is forecast to build more than two trillion square feet of of floor space in the next 40 years. That's the equivalent of adding an entire New York City every month. I get that. I really do. But here's the thing. Or... In fact, here's two or three things. The environmental lobby believes that one of the key alternatives to concrete and steel is laminated timber. Timber from sustainable forests. You know, those same forests that are often described as the lungs of the world. This, they say, is an integral part of the circular building strategy. But are they missing a trick? I understand the notion of embodied carbon that has been spent to obtain the building materials of today, 
but the harvesting of timber brings its own carbon deficit. And besides, we actually have the ability to create circular buildings by demolishing existing buildings and by reusing and recycling the constituent parts in future builds. Now, I'd, I'd like to believe that I'm as green as the next guy, but I'm also concerned that we could potentially throw the environmental baby out with the embodied carbon bathwater if we're not very, very careful. Now, just so you know, the subject of materials reuse and the protection of forests is part of a new film we've produced in conjunction with a pioneering company over in Canada. That film is actually available now on our members-only platform, but it will drop with our wider audience later this week. Stand by your beds, people. There's a new Cabelco excavator in town. Cabelco is well known for its well-performing, heavy, short-radius excavators like the SK230SR and the SK270SR because of their excellent drawbar pull, swing torque, smooth hydraulic system, high lifting performance and low fuel consumption. We are introducing an even heavier model to suit customer requirements in applications that need more power and lifting performance in cramped job sites. The SK380SR is the heaviest short radius excavator available in the market. The SK380SR is complying with stage 5 of exhaust emission regulations. Its operating weight ranges between 36 and 38 ton depending on the configuration. This makes it the heaviest SR model in the industry. The undercarriage of this machine is a long chloral type for excellent stability and performance. The machine is available with either mono boom or two piece boom. The arm is a heavy duty type with rock card. The boom cell in the diameter is the biggest within this segment for excellent lifting performance. Extra nibbler and breaker piping object handling kit and preparation for quick edge piping are part of the standard configuration. The machine has a clean exterior for safety and efficiency. The operator has an excellent all-round view, also including the right-hand side. The machine is equipped with a 30-ton class Hino engine delivering 188 kilowatts. And also it is equipped with a 30-ton class hydraulic pump. Filters are easy accessible in the pump compartment. The swing motor is 35 ton class and also the uh, undercarriage is a 35 ton class undercarriage with 600, 700, 800 and 850 millimeter shoes available. The door at the left hand side gives us access to the cooling system, the air cleaner and the starter battery. The cooling system was redesigned in order to meet the requirements of the short radius design. The SK380SR has a large operator cabin, ROPS, a FOPS Level 2 compliant. The FOPS is openable. The seat is branded as suspension type. The radio is DAB Plus with Bluetooth and hands-free functionality. The air conditioning fans are ergonomically placed around the operator and the machine has specific features for easy handling of objects like swing priority, heavy lift 
and independent travel. The SK380 SR is the heaviest SR model in the market. The lifting performance, swing torque, dedicated lifting features and compact dimensions make this machine suitable for any job site. I realise that nobody buys an excavator based on looks alone, but if you did... Axoft and Svantec are your high-end partners for noise, vibration, dust and air quality systems, sensors and software. To find out more, visit axoft.co.uk or call 01234 639 550. When work is scarce, there will always be a temptation to lowball prices to win work, to undercut rivals to keep your men and your machines working. I get it, I really do. But we find ourselves in, uh, in the midst of a post-pandemic boom. We currently have more work than we have men, machines and materials for. So why is this cycle of stupidity race to the bottom still going on? In a report in the Construction Inquirer today, subcontractors have said that tendering for jobs at the moment is like the Wild West. Established suppliers uh, claim problems are being exacerbated by inexperienced quantity surveyors accepting lowest bids from subcontractors without carrying out proper checks on the ability of those firms to deliver. One company said, we are an established firm with a track record of delivery, but we are losing out on bids that are just ridiculous. These firms are low. Uh, the firms that are lowballing are virtual zombie businesses, desperate to get some money in at any cost, with no real chance of seeing out the contract. It's then been made worse by inexperienced QSs who think they are being clever, securing a low price bid. They aren't even doing basic credit checks or visiting factories or and offices to check if these firms can deliver what they claim. Another specialist said, "When a supplier goes belly up, it costs the main contractors a fortune." It's a total false economy. These QSs need to wise up as they are storing up massive problems for their employers. The Miller GT series heralds a new era of unrivaled power and cutting edge intelligent coupler technology, increasing job site safety, machine versatility and productivity. It's the added versatility that you need at the value you can afford. To find out more, visit millergroundbreaking.com. We get awfully excited by the arrival of a new excavator or wheel loader. We get very animated with the announcement of a new attachment. But there's a key part of the construction equipment world that is often overlooked because it's deemed unsexy, even though without it, those machines and attachments would be pretty damn useless. Uh, we're talking about ground engaging tools, or in this instance, bucket teeth. Those fine folks at Komatsu have released a new video showcasing a new bucket tooth system. Let's take a look. Keeping your machine working efficiently and with minimal downtime are the most important jobs of any tooth system. In order to meet those demands, we designed the K-Prime tooth system to be safer, more reliable, and provide better productivity than other tooth systems. We understand that working on the job site is dangerous, and we made a safer tooth system because of it. We accomplished this by adding pry slots, weight markings to each component, and more innovative changes such as redesigning our locking system so it is intuitive and easy to use. We went so far as to add a push-out feature to help dislodge the fastener when the pin is unlocked to simplify the process of changing teeth. You wouldn't buy a machine that was unreliable, so why would you buy a tooth system that isn't either? We increased the strength of the adapter nose by up to 10%. The pin design was improved to reduce the number of lost teeth due to accidental unlocking. The tooth was redesigned to reduce wear on adapters and wear caps. Tooth stability was improved by engineering a better tooth to adapter fit. Being productive is important on any job site, so making sure your GET lasts as long as possible was a goal of ours. We increased the usable wear material up to 15%, added wear indicators so you know when components need to be replaced to maximize production efficiency. We also designed the tooth to stay sharp through its life. The teeth can also be rotated 180 degrees, extending their wear life. The K-Prime tooth system is ideal for all excavators and wheel loaders and can be used in any construction or mining application. 
With K-Prime, we've come up with a new standard, one that utilizes technology to create a safer worksite, more reliable components, and overall increased productivity. Contact your Hensley sales representative or Komatsu dealer to find out how K-Prime can work for you. Now, if you'd like something to get your teeth into, don't forget that the Mighty Construction Collective will be assembling once again on Thursday evening for a Halloween theme, a Halloween themed spooktacular show. There will be a whole host of new and exciting equipment on display. Plus, we will be giving uh, one of you a chance to win a superb pair of high tech safety glasses. Let's get rid of the bats because they are somewhat annoying. Um, but you have to be in it to win it. So be sure to tune in at 6 p.m. on Thursday evening. And Ken Hatcher, if you're still here, we realize that that coincides with your Tesco delivery, but that's never stopped you in the past. So make sure that you're there as well, Ken. Uh, and we, we look forward to uh, seeing you enter all the competitions that we have in mind. Sorry to interrupt the guy with the funny glasses, but if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button as it helps our channel. Or better still, Share this video with a friend or a colleague. Thank you. Right, back to Beardy. Right, that pretty much wraps up the show for today. Uh, as I said earlier, I've got work to do on our new members-only platform that I talked about in today's email newsletter. And if you didn't see that, two things. I will recap in a second, but uh, if you go over to demolitionnews.com, have a look at the contact section. You can just drop in your email address there and you will be on the mailing list for that weekly email newsletter. But let me recap on what our members only um, platform is all about. So the National Federation of Demolition Contractors here in the UK provides a forum for around 140 demolition companies and their principals. Uh, the Institute of Demolition Engineers provides a similar forum for around 700 engineers and middle managers. But the 20,000 plus, and it's more like 24,000 actually, uh, site workers have no such forum through which to discuss their fears and concerns, their hopes, ambitions and aspirations. But they soon will. Uh, we're working on something in the background. Uh, let me throw up the graphic here. Yeah, we're working on something in the background that will allow them and us to discuss all things demolition away from prying eyes and prying ears. Uh, we will be throwing open the doors to the member-only club very soon, before it's built, in fact, so you can see it being built and even influence the way it will eventually look. In fact, if you take a look at chat right now, you will find a link to the now fully functioning sign-up page. The site has already been populated with some member-only content, including that um, film that I mentioned from Canada earlier today, but there's plenty more to come. So watch this space. Uh, I will be back here tomorrow, usual time, usual place, for more of this old stuff and nonsense. But until then, stay safe, look after yourself, your family, your friends, and your colleagues. I'm going to hop over into the chat in a second to see what you've all got to say for yourselves. But until then, have a great day.